Welcome back. Here we are in Riker Yard. And I think today what we'll do is uh, work opposite. What we usually have been doing is west to east. So we'll start here at the current east end of the railroad and work our way west just to give you a uh, update as to what we've been doing. So uh, the big change here in Riker Yard is we have three yard tracks in now. I think previously we had the two mains and uh, the yard running tracks. So now we've got three additional tracks for a total of six and there will be four more yard tracks off the end of this uh, ladder and all the tracks here in the yard are all code 70 and are hand laid. I'm not sure if you can pick it up on the camera or not but uh, they're probably too straight for yard tracks but they do have a little bit of a wander in them so I think it's kind of a interesting feature and as we've discussed before um, with a railroad this size doing everything um, with hand laid track I would never get finished so that's why the mains and sidings are going to be uh, flex track. Um, so the midpoint of Riker Yard is right here. So you can see it's a pretty long yard so I've got obviously the other ladder to build uh, in that direction. So for now I'm just going to stop it here um, until I finish doing some more bench work but at this point this is really just working as a staging yard rather than an operating classification yard which it will ultimately be but serving its purpose for now and uh, eventually I'll work in the the yard lead up here that leads into Elk Run uh, as well where there's some industries other small progress is I put a repeater in on this side of the railroad because as you get down yes, to but, uh, uh, not that we're there yet, but when we get to that point, the uh, radio signal doesn't quite uh, pick up perfectly over Before there. If we got so. any issues, I figured I'd put a repeater in. Um, not sure if the elk run, I can't remember if this was in or not. Um, so this is additional base for elk run. I think it may have been in. Uh, next piece of progress is uh, I always intended having really nothing to do with the railroad I intended to put a, a door in underneath the steps so that I could use that for storage because the uh, only spot really narrow here between the, the furnace air return and uh, this one post but what I think I might do and uh, the stair stringer obviously is going to stick in, so the door is going to have to open towards you. Um, but on this side, still plenty of room to walk in really without ducking, so I'll have to put some padding or caution tape there. But actually, compared to some of the dispatcher areas I've seen on railroads, uh, this is pretty easy to get into. Um, using a very narrow pre-hung door, 18-inch door, so still super small, but at the same time way bigger than that space in between the return and the post. So. Uh, I think this will be a, an interesting spot for the dispatcher's office. Um, at least that's the theory for the time being. So we'll see if that here theory uh, ends up uh, working its way into reality or not. But that is the concept for now. So still obviously working on putting this door in. But uh, like I said, at the very least, it'll be a good area for, for storing quite a variety of things. But you know, maybe I'll store stuff underneath the railroad and this will be the dispatcher's office. So... We shall see. Another thing we talked about previously was rolling stock. And now that Riker Yard has some additional tracks, you can see things opened up here a little bit in uh, Pittsburgh staging. And there's a long cut right here of 13 B&O hopper cars, all individually lettered using the AccuRail um, renumbering decals. So thanks to Bob Charles for painting and decaling all of those for me. So that's a, another 13 cars. Uh, I've also just been adding, and I really don't have them in any kind of easy to view order, um, I've just been adding other cars that I've picked up from train shows or eBay or, or wherever, uh, or just out of my stock of kits that I've built a few. So I continue to add cars to the railroad but we're still short but we're getting better so the uh, 
op sessions were test op sessions that we're running right now. The trains were pretty darn short, but uh, just ran the new op session on the computer, didn't print them out yet, and the uh, train lengths have already noticeably increased. So that's a that's a good sign as well. And to that end, here we are in Butler. And now we are mid-op session here, so there's still more trains to come and go out of Butler. Um, but you can see this is starting to get some pretty good exercise in terms of cars, uh, car utilization or track utilization. Still not even close to being full, but this is probably the fullest it's been since we started doing test operations. And then finally, I think the last thing to report, you'll note there's a GP9 sitting on the power storage siding here just outside of WS Tower and the reason it's sitting there instead of what was there which was a northern branch train I'm able to do that because the northern branch is finished so we've got our code 55 northern branch runs all the way underneath the main line and back behind the backdrop into a three track staging yard if we're looking here on the uh, diagram, you can see the northern branch comes in here and then tucks behind the backdrop. I didn't, I didn't put an arc at the end here, so they're a little bit shorter, and I can show you that. So these will get covered by scenery, but there's the three stub end staging tracks. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is, this is just a temporary control panel. I just have a power switch, um, and then. Uh, two toggles for each of the two uh, tortoise switch machines and I've got the tracks powered by the internal contacts uh, or switches rather on the, the tortoise machines so depending on which track you line for you'll get that's the only track that will be powered um, so I'll probably build a better permanent control panel and I'm not sure exactly where I'll put that but for the time being this temporary one's going to have to stand in and just pause okay. a moment. Wasn't sure it'd be light enough back here, but I think it's going to be at least light enough to see. So here we come in, and I just mounted the switch machines uh, above the, the bench work simply because it's easier to deal with them. Um, just got all the, the terminal blocks in here. In addition to the, uh, each tortoise has two internal switches, and so in addition to controlling track power, um, the remaining open terminals on each of these will be used to light up LEDs on the control panel so you can see uh, which there'll be a graphic on the control panel to help you understand which turnouts to throw but also that uh, LED will indicate which track you're lined for and consequently which track you are uh, you have powered so right now we've just got a real short train single car train that came up here to Petrolia or Bruin on the first staging track but as I said, three staging tracks total. I think in the real real life, there were two trains each day in each direction. Um, so I can do that with uh, the three staging tracks. I'm not sure if I will, but I figured, you know, the old rule of staging, figure out how much you need and double it. I didn't quite double it. I probably went only, I thought I needed two, so I added 50% more. But um, the other thing I'm going to do on that control panel is um, put in uh, IR occupancy detectors at each fouling point and then at the far end so you can see on the control panel when you're clear of the fouling point because that LED will go off and then when you get to the far end you can see that you'll have an LED light up to tell you that you're a couple of inches away from the end of the of the track so between those two this is the only area on the railroad that is completely hidden staging um, so I figured it made sense to have some automation to uh, to assist operators and in getting their trains in and out, particularly because it's such a short run into Butler. So I think that's it for now. It took a while to get all this bench work back here and, and kind of awkward, not super awkward, I can stand up at least, but um, you know, it's always awkward to work in odd spots. And uh, yeah, so that took a while and the three tracks in Riker probably took up, those are the two things that took up the most uh, most time since the last update, um, but it's great. So what that means, let me hop back out What here. that means is, with the exception of the Clearfield branch, which will come over the top of Pittsburgh, coming from the other room, with the exception of that, 
all of the track in the first room is now in. So we're all the way out around and you can see we're about that roughly at that halfway point uh, at Riker Yard still missing several of the the yard tracks as we discussed so that's the update for now but uh, we're officially done in the first room and probably the next thing I'm gonna come back in and put foam everywhere just so I don't have any more issue not I haven't had issues but just I have no more risk of uh, rail cars finding the way to the floor so quite a bit of open bench work here so that'll probably be the next uh, sequence is uh, try and getting that done and which means well like I said get to uh, get the pink foam which means the railroad will probably look worse before it looks better but once we start getting all the foam in then maybe we'll start working on a little bit of scenery before we extend past Riker Yard I haven't decided if that's what I'm gonna do yet but that's a possibility so more to follow and We'll see you next time.